Well, I'm the best in the game. I feel confident because I'm the best in the world. Don't you open your mouth about the best. It's simple. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Best in the Game podcast. That is our official name. Um, if you couldn't tell by our intro and the different um, sounds we had in it, that's what we decided on. So I hope everyone likes it. We were going to think of doing like an all girls thing, but you know, we decided to keep it just generic and <laughs> works out. Yeah, it works out well. So we're going to talk about some Philly stuff today and we're going to highlight the previous week. So week three. Just any random news, injuries, and then we are going to go on to week four and pick our favorites. So let's get started. Kayla, you want to start with Phillies, the, your man. fills? It's, it's been a long eight years. So they officially were eliminated from the playoffs. I felt that they've been eliminated for a while. Um, I did not see them coming back, especially because they had a tough September playing a lot of um, divisional games. But it's just upsetting because you get Bryce Harper, you have JT Romito, and it's like they're playing well, like their numbers are good, but something's just not clicking. And as soon as McCutcheon got hurt, honestly, everything went down. And I think that falls a lot on Clintac, the general manager, because once McCutcheon got hurt and Adubo Herrera, that whole situation happened, he did nothing to complete that outfield. And then you go in like, oh, we got some Aaron Nola and some change for our starting pitching. Let's not pick up anybody else at the trade deadline in the beginning of the season. I think clintac has got to go. Um, I don't know if Kapler's job is safe, but I would keep Kapler over Clintac, and I'm not the biggest Kapler fan in the world. I agree with that. I didn't know if Kapler would be safe or not, but I agree with what you said there. I think, like you said, they were m- – instead of picking people up, they kind of just played with what they had. And like I said last week, threw people that don't play outfield in their outfield and vice versa. And like I said – yeah, you are you play professional baseball, but it's a tough adjustment to make in one night when you're playing games nightly. So if it's Thursday night and you play infield and then the next day they say, all right, you're going to play outfield tomorrow on Friday. You're like, all right, well, I have to adjust. So right. the chances of winning that game aren't that high unless they can get themselves together that quickly. I totally agree with the Andrew McCutcheon thing. When that happened, I felt like it's going to be a little... It's going to be rough from and here on out. he's a le- not even just a leader on the field. He's a vocal leader as yeah. well. So he- not having him at all those away games, him rehabbing, being kind of disconnected from the team, even though he did try his best to always be there. But you can't always go on away games when you're rehabbing. Exactly. There's You have other things to tend to to get yourself better for the next season. And I think that in any sport, having that leader – is so important because that's what brings the team together and really gets everyone not necessarily pumped but prepared to do their job and without that leader this is where you kind of struggle that's not the main thing technicality is the main thing but I definitely think that's a big part and with the Adubal Herrera situation that was unfortunate as well but it is what it is and I feel like soon it's all going to click for them it's definitely going to click soon I hope so I mean it's been eight years I'm still reminiscing for Phillies <laughs> um baseball from 2008 to 2011 I'm like oh remember those years you were eight like well, I we know. were both eight like, <laughs> that's like crazy to think about and I mean it wasn't that long ago but it feels like an eternity I feel like I haven't I love baseball as a whole but being like a diehard Philadelphia fan of all sports I haven't been able to cheer for the Phillies because it's like, oh, they go on the stretch. They can't win more than four games. But you have Bryce Harper, who's one of the best players in the league and has proven that time and time again. He embraces the city so well. But they're just not getting it done. Some Changes need to be made. They need to come back with a pitching staff next year. Yeah. Um, I mean, if McCutcheon's back next year, which I think he will be, he did tear his ACL, but that was the middle of the season. So hopefully he'll be good. Um, I think Clintac needs to go. I mean – you got Bryce Harper, great. You got JT, great. But then in the middle of your season when you're literally falling apart, you're not going to do anything. Let's make those players look good. Let's bring other players in that maybe aren't as good as Bryce Harper but are going to make him look good and do their job perfectly to make right. the whole team look good. And pitching, that's just I, that's that's going to be a problem. It's Some teams suffer from it more than others, but 
you know, pitching is a hit or a miss for a little Literally. joke in and there. But <laughs> I the mean, Phillies could benefit from some new yeah. pitchers. And in the playoffs, I mean, pitching is everything. Um, it's not really a slugging contest in the playoffs. Sometimes it is, but you see those tough games, the teams that go on to win the World Series, you see those Cole Hamels type guys that end up winning World Series MVP. So, but to another Philly sport going into hockey, <laughs> which kind of like just started, it's Gritty's birthday. So it's one year since he's been announced. I didn't realize that, but that's pretty cool. I cannot stand Gritty. Really? I can't stand him. My friend and I have an ongoing joke. Today, she actually put a vi- the birthday video for Gritty on her story and tagged me in it. I, the moment he was announced, it's not even that he freaks me out because I'm not scared of him, but it's like, he just makes me uncomfortable. And it's kind of <laughs> like if anyone's, you know, been to the Phillies game and seen the Phillies dance, on the um, fanatic dance on the dugout. When he does that thing with his belly and he like launches it forward, that makes me so uncomfortable. Does like, it really? What, what is gritty? And what is the fanatic? What are they? What species? I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I think I just grew up with the fanatic. So like, that's I, all I know. You I know like what the I mean? Fanatic. Don't get me wrong. I like him. I, I think love he's him. funny. But when he does that thing with his belly and then you got to embrace it, man. It's just like, <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Like, I hope that guy gets paid a ton of money to go up there and do that. <laughs> but happy birthday, Gritty. I'll give it to you. <laughs> um, let's go right into the NFL. Um, this week was pretty good. Uh, even though I am a Cowboys fan and I'm in the NFC East, I actually was rooting for Daniel Jones. Yeah, I was I, too. I thought he he did really, really good. I can't, I can't believe it. And I can't believe they won. Like when I, um, I know a lot of people didn't see the game because it wasn't the broadcasted game of the time. Oh, but I was so annoyed. I watched <laughs> it on Red Zone. And when he got that touchdown at the end, I was like, oh my God, he's going to do it. He's going to pull it off. And they left it wide open and he ran in. So Daniel Jones had over 300 passing yards, I think two um, passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns. And it was the Giants' first win. And he did embrace Eli Manning when he walked up the field, which I was going to say, I wonder if they're actually, like, if Eli's going to fake the smile or look happy. <laughs> and Eli looked genuinely happy for him. That's just a Manning thing. They're always nice. I don't think they can be yeah. mean. So, go Daniel Jones. By the way, um, the Eagles have the same record as the Giants. Let, yeah, let's I mean, let that settle. I don't know. I give props to Daniel Jones. Um, I think he's a young quarterback. Um, I think he's going to do well in this league. But like I said, he's very young. Um, Carson and Dak, they were all there at that point. They're mm-hmm. still young for this league. But I think it's time for the Giants to move on from Eli. Um, Eli gave them a great run. But – there's always going to be a competitor in you, um, kind of like the Nick Foles, Carson Wentz situation. Mm-hmm. They could really get along, have a great locker room bond, but there's going to be something inside of you that's like, I wish that was me. But I think overall, Eli is happy. Um, I'm curious if he sees it, though, as like, this is it for me, or mm-hmm. if he sees it as like, once Daniel Jones has a few bad games, I'm going back in. And with the Eagles, it's disappointing at this point. We got a tough game on Thursday. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, they can't catch the ball. They traded their hands in for bricks Yeah. at this point. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else Carson can do. He didn't have the best game, but when he needed to step up, he did. And our receivers could not catch the ball. Um, I feel like the thing with Carson is that Carson plays a great second half every single game that I've watched him. Not a great second half, but he steps it up in the first half. He always comes out and plays a little better in the second half, which is fine that happens to a lot of different players but it's frustrating to think that if he would have threw one more pass in the first half they would have had a touchdown or if he would have they would have gotten one more first down they could have kicked the field goal or if he would have ran one more yard you know what I mean it's kind of things like that so I'm not blaming it on him at all but it is yes there wasn't anything more that Carson Wentz could do in that second half when your receivers aren't catching. But, for example, if he would have stepped it up a tiny bit in the first half, they would have had one more touchdown, which would have automatically put them on the top. So it's, yeah. kind of, it's things like I that. Agree. I mean, they had a good first drive. Um, they had a good first quarter. The second quarter, they fell asleep. What does not make sense to me is we know that you don't have Deshaun. You, you don't have Alshon. Goddard's in and out because he's coming off that injury. Where is the run game? You traded for Jordan Howard. Why is he not in the game? Yeah, Jordan. Every time he comes in, he is able to break through two 300-pound linemen and get that first down. But, no, let's bring Miles Sanders in. I love the guy. I think he's awesome. But he's also a rookie. He's going to make mistakes. 
and you have Jordan Howard on the sideline, put him in. Use the run game while you have it because we have our B team wide receivers out there right now. And yeah, you can't count on them to catch a ball at this point, but there's other options that we're not utilizing. I don't know if that's Carson not reading his play calls or if that's Doug and Deuce Staley just not putting in and enforcing Jordan Howard in the run game. Um, I think that Jordan Howard is that guy that you got to use when you're going toward the end zone. I mean, I agree, yeah. that's the guy that's going to pummel through a couple people and get right into the end zone when you're second and eight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's that kind of thing. That's where he would be used the best. Yeah, use Miles to get you down the field. But if Miles isn't getting you down the field in the second, and fumbling the second the ball. drive, or if he fumble, for, yeah, didn't he fumble the ball around three times? Yes. So after he fumbled it twice, they should have taken him out yeah. and put Jordan Howard in. I mean, you trade for him, you use him, especially use him when someone fumbles or use him when that's run to run two running backs on the field. Do right. that. Like do something. Change it up because run, it's obviously run, not working. Run two tight ends on the field if Dallas Goddard is obviously if he's doing better than JJ Arthur Whiteside. It's that kind of thing. You just have to change the plays a little bit to match what is happening to your team. Yeah, you can use your second stringers and put them in in the first stringers place, but kind of change around the play and think JJ Arthur the Whiteside can't catch that deep ball like Nelson Aguilar can or Alton Jeffrey right. can. So let's or whatever. So. Th- put a running back in there and mm-hmm. run a play instead it yeah you might not benefit the first couple times you try it so then put your back up in but you got to use jordan howard i agree he, he can't be sitting on the bench no and he's just i'm not saying put him in for every single play you need to get miles sanders in there get sproles in there but he's playing it seems almost like less than sproles less than sanders And in my opinion, right now, he should be the number one guy just because Sanders is a rookie. I think Miles is eventually going to be that number one guy for the Eagles. They love him a lot. I think they see a lot of Shady McCoy in him. They have similar um, techniques, but he's also a rookie. He's going to make mistakes. Everybody's going to make mistakes, but Jordan Howard's been in this league. He was great on the Bears. That's why you traded for Mm -hmm. him. So use him. Yeah, I totally agree. Let's um, talk about the Bears. Mitch Trubisky. He finally threw his first touchdown of the season, I believe. Yeah. Um, and they had an awesome game last night against the Redskins. Um, Mitch Trubisky finally stepped out of his comfort zone this season. Um, you know, last season it was, is he overrated? A lot of people thought he was. He stepped out of his comfort zone with his third game this season, and they finally won, and they put up a lot of points. They did a really good last night. So... Go, go Bears for that. Their defense did great. Um, their defense actually had four sacks, three forced fumbles, and one touchdown. Their defense went insane. I think they had 18 around, or 13, 18, I forget the number, on standard um, fantasy last night. Mm-hmm. So they did awesome. Yeah, I mean, their defense was dominant last year. Um, we all knew about that. But, yeah, I mean, I think Mitch Trubisky, he seems to me like he's an on-and-off quarterback, not super consistent. So I definitely think this is his year to prove that, like, he's the guy for the Bears. I mean, the Bears seem to be invested in him, but he needs to prove that, like, he can put points on the board and that you can't always rely on your defense. You can't have them out there majority of the game because they're going to get tired. They're going to make mistakes at some point. So he needs to be consistent, and I think that was a great game for him to prove that at like in the beginning of the season so that he can build on that throughout and the bears backup is chase daniel and (laughs) chase daniel isn't what the bears want to have to resort to rely so (laughs) yeah hopefully mr biscuit keeps playing i like how he played last night i do like him too i think the bears defense is stronger than the offense which kind of doesn't look good on it doesn't look good on him because everyone automatically says that which is true when you think of the bears it's their defense exactly it's and it's been for a while now but I think last year people thought he was overrated. I think this year, I think he'll set in a little bit this year. But another quarterback that people have been saying is overrated now is Baker. Um, I wouldn't call him overrated. He's still young. Exactly. He's still got time. I mean, I like you have here, he put up a great fight against, against the Rams. I thought they were going to win that. Like last week I called the Browns. I was confident. Yeah, right. um, they are a younger team. They're a newer team. But I think he's just got to get those games under his belt. I mean, you're playing a team that was in the Super Bowl last year. Um, a great coach in Sean McVay, a quarterback in Jared Goff, Todd Gurley. You're going to need those kind of games to get under your belt, to get experience. Um, I think he played good. I wouldn't say great. 
But I don't think he's overrated just yet. I wouldn't say that. He's still young. He still has a lot of time in this league to prove himself. And a team that's also new and also kind of rebuilding and just getting to that place where they could be playoff contenders. I totally agree. I don't think he's overrated. But he has such a new and young team around him Mm -hmm. that they all need to build and work together. So once he adjusts to Odell Beckham the way he plays and once he adjusts to these couple new guys, they're going to be they're going to be good. And you need time, like I say about the Phillies. They weren't all going to set in the moment Bryce Harper right. walked through that door. You need time to set in. So give it a couple years, and the, the Browns are going to have a good run for a little while. But I don't think he's necessarily overrated. I think he's very young. I think he has his flaws like everyone else. I do think they put up a great fight against the Bears last night, although Baker didn't put up any really fantasy points. Right. I think that they put up a good fight last night as a team. Yeah, and don't forget, they also have Kareem Hunt coming exactly. back in the middle of the season. We don't know how he's going to be coming back. Is he practicing? Is he working out? Is he keeping up with his reps? But he's a guy that you have to have in mind because he's definitely great at that running back position, and he could be a huge help for their offense. Yeah. And also the Bears right now, their schedule is not necessarily hard, but, yeah, they played the Rams. And how many teams are really going to beat the Rams? Right. You know, to and to talk touch on the Rams, there's eight undefeated teams in the NFL, and the Rams are one of them. And yeah. so the Rams are running like they were last year. No, I didn't think they were going to, to be honest, because they had a couple guys that were like one year deals on there, mm-hmm. and they left. But and also Todd Gurley's not playing like the Todd Gurley he was last year. Yeah. And I get that it's a little different. You're passing more. Um, yeah. I mean, you're getting Cooper Cup involved. Cooper Cup was out last year, and it's also Gurley has been struggling mm-hmm. with injuries, his knees. But a team that does surprise me that's undefeated, I'm going to have to go with the Packers. And only because that Thursday night game when they opened up, Mm -hmm. I expected them to lose. I'm going to come out and say that I did because I think a lot of – they were the underdogs in that game. And that's why it was a huge game for them to win. Even though it was a preseason game and it was tough to watch, I can't – it got their season going so far. Um, I think they're going to lose at some point. But, I mean, I'm not surprised about the Cowboys – you guys are a decent team, mm-hmm. um, but you've also played the Redskins, the Giants, yeah. and the Dolphins. Not taking that away, no, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, you're not playing the Patriots and the Rams. Um, Chiefs, they're the Chiefs, you know. Yeah, I was going to ask you who kind of surprised you on this list, and I think that – so our list is the Bills, Patriots, Cowboys, Packers, Chiefs, Rams, 49ers, and the Lions. And like you said, I really thought the Packers were going to lose on Thursday Night Football, too. But you have Aaron Rodgers versus Mitch Trubisky. That's your opening. So Right. I I mean, I obviously, Aaron Rodgers is better than Mm -hmm. Trubisky um, for a lot of reasons. But (laughs) the Bears' defense is a shutdown defense. And I'm not saying that Aaron Rodgers Mm -hmm. can't get through that because he's Aaron Rodgers. But they are a very strong defense. So I thought it would give him some trouble, which it did (laughs) because it wasn't a super high – scoring game but he was able to come out with a win and that's honestly all that matters the Packers defense did step up yes um a lot Mm -hmm. so they were able to take they were able to handle that do what they needed to do I think the teams that surprised me on here if I had to pick three that surprised me out of the eight which is a lot so maybe I shouldn't pick three because (laughs) obviously everyone's gonna pick the same three as me I feel like the Bills, 49ers, and the Lions. I'm going to yeah. pick the Bills as my top one that really surprised me. Really? I mean, the 49ers, not so much because Jimmy Garoppolo is back, so yeah. that's a little different. And their team's not bad. They have a lot of talent on that team. But the Bills surprised me. Yeah. Um, I would say that, is, too. Is Josh Allen, like, is he the new stud? What's up I with hear that? a lot of people have him on <laughs> fantasy. They do. A lot of people do. And they all say he's a stud. Um, it's It's been three games, but they've played decent. So... Going into the season, it's going to be interesting. I think um, he's good for their team, but I don't know. It's going to be an interesting thing to look at throughout the season. So if the Bills stay how they are and the Eagles stay how they are and they play each other in October, (laughs) October 29th, I believe, October 29th, in Bills country, Bills Mafia, what do you think? Just – but, all right, let's – your injuries are back. Mm. See, I don't. I can't. You don't want to disrespect your team like that. Now, this is. I don't want to. I think not to, judge them, but it's like they've only had one game mm-hmm. with Deshaun and Alshon fully healthy. So it's like, yeah, they had. We know Deshaun's a deep weapon, mm-hmm. but how do they play for a stretch like that? I still take um, the Eagles hundred percent because really? they put up a fight against the Lions and they put up a fight against the Falcons. Yeah. Like major, like it was with a B team. They lose by three. What three points? Right. A touchdown. I, I don't think it would the be a good score. game, but. Um, 
I think if your A team's back, a majority of your A team's back, you guys got that. And yeah. it's hard to judge right now because we're three games in, but you guys have so many injuries right now and va- vital players that are injured. So if you guys get your injuries back, I think you got it in the bag. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's. We should just make a whole segment called AB News. Oh my gosh. AB drama. AB, AB drama. <laughs> Dude. Continuing for the rest of the season. Like, yeah. it's three There's going to be more. Like, you're always going to hear about it. In the NFL, and he's not even playing, and he's still one of the major points now. Like, yeah. you think after he decided he wasn't playing, he wouldn't even be headline anymore. But, so let's just touch on the Patriots. Without AB first, Philip Dorsett's looking good. And right. that's not a surprise. But he played really well the other day. Um, yeah, I think that he will be one of their new go-to guys. I don't think they were relying on AB to even be there forever. Mm-hmm. He only signed a one-year deal, and he didn't finish more than one game. Right. We still don't know why, because Bill Belichick, during his interview, was extremely rude to that woman and gave her a very mean look. <laughs> it was extremely unprofessional, in my opinion. I'm not afraid to say that. I think Belichick's just one of those guys that he just always seems miserable. And he always seems like he doesn't want to talk to anybody and he's rude. Um, So if A.B. literally can't stay on the Patriots, there's no shot and other teams going to pick him up. But like you said, Dorsett, I mean, not that it's easy to be good when you have Brady as your quarterback, but Brady is going to be able to make you better Mm -hmm. um make you a better teammate make you better at your position and i think that he's in a great position right now with brady and the patriots and not having a b there Mm -hmm. um none of that drama and then he also has a chance chance to shine that's kind of corny but whatever (laughs) no it's not corny i totally agree and i think that philip dorsett being there is great and he's been great and they're still gonna get their playoff run like every other year for yeah. the Patriots. I last year <laughs> I was like there's no way they're winning the Super Bowl. I and then I they think do. They were like my least likely pick for the Super Bowl last year. Me and too. then when they beat the Chiefs in that game, that was just as like everyone remembers that Saints penalty. Um, but does no one recall the Chiefs and the Patriots game and how awful that game was and then it went into overtime? Well, when Tom Brady got the ball, when the Patriots got the ball first in overtime, mm-hmm. why I hate NFL overtime rules. NFL overtime rules are awful. The Chiefs' defense is not as good, or last year was not as good as their offense, and we all knew that. So you're giving Tom Brady the ball, the best quarterback in the league. What do you think is going to happen? He's going to go off the field and score. Your defense can't hold Tom Brady. But I'm curious if it was Mahomes on the other end, how think, would that turn out? I think Mahomes would have won up the field, and I think the NFL needs to take the college rules and oh, one, I two touchdowns. Let the other team try to get a touchdown because I think Pat Mahomes would have gotten a touchdown. I with the mm-hmm. with the weapons he had, Tyreek right. uh, Tyreek Hill, Travis. Come Kelsey. on, like let's. He would have gotten a touchdown, and it would be a whole different story right now. And the Chiefs would have won the Super Bowl, <laughs> <laughs> and the Super Bowl wouldn't have been boring. God knows oh why the gosh. Super Bowl is boring because the Patriots were in it, and it's never boring with the Patriots. But whatever. I would have loved to see a Brady Breeze um, oh. Super Bowl. I Two think, veteran quarterbacks. I think we said that over and over again that we had it set in our heads that it was happening like we were like and it was it's it was supposed to happen i mean it was and now this whole i don't know how you feel about the challenge flags on pass interference but i just feel like it's never gonna going to be right coaches are gonna challenge like not everything they see because Mm -hmm. it takes away from timeouts but they're always going to question that and they'll be like oh should i throw a challenge because we don't really know what the exact rule is like is it enough to overturn? Is mm-hmm. the um, call on the field going to stand? But now since the refs messed that up, it's going to be an ongoing thing. And also, not to go back to the Eagles, but Miles Sanders almost got his head ripped off and there was not one flag. He could have snapped his neck. Yeah. I looked at it. I was like, oh, my gosh. I don't know how a referee didn't see that. But on to another running back. What, as Becca calls the blue tent. Hold on. I just want to say that AB enrolled in Central Michigan again. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I did skip that. So for – I just just wanted to say it really quick. So for his professors, good luck. So anyway, into my blue, <laughs> into my beautiful blue tent. Saquon Barkley is out with an ankle injury. He's four to eight weeks. Um, Yeah, that's definitely going to hurt them because they're the Giants. But he – 
looked happy the day bouncing off the field on one foot to go hug Daniel Jones and the rest of his team. I think it'll be four weeks. I think he'll be fine. Um, I'm a huge Saquon fan, and yeah, he's in our um, NFC East, but I think he's such a talented player. Um, so when I saw that, I was like, I was a little hurt. I was like, no, like this guy's got to be okay. I love watching him play, but I mean, it is going to hurt them. We don't know how far they're going to go this year. We see one game that Daniel Jones played really well. Um, how far is that going to continue? We don't know, but say they were to go on a run, it would be really hard for them to make that run without Saquon. But if they're the typical Giants, as they have been for the past few years, um, Saquon, he he can heal up until they actually yeah, win right. some games. <laughs> they can, he can take his time and heal because... It's not like they have the Super Bowl run this year anyway. Right, Unless no. Daniel Jones turns it around and they turn amazing. <laughs> How <laughs> crazy would because that be? They get Golden Tate back, not this week, but next <gasps> week in week five. Oh, my gosh. That's so he true. could be a new weapon because Sterling Shepard's he, he's awesome. Yeah. I like Sterling Shepard a lot. Um, so with Golden Tate, it could be a total game changer. Wow. Um, but the Chiefs have two injured running backs. Maybe not injured, but struggling running backs. Damian Williams with the knee and LaShawn McCoy with an ankle. Just some... Minor details. We really don't need to comment (laughs) on them. But, yeah, they have been struggling a little bit. So, pick up their other running back if you play fantasy this week. Just a heads up. (laughs) Um, Just in case one of them doesn't play. Um, And then Cam Newton with his foot. He's rehabbing to avoid surgery. And Kyle Allen's looking pretty good. And people are saying that Cam Newton should be kind of forcing himself into retirement. But, I mean, I feel like he's still young for the age of quarterbacks right now because you have Tom Brady, Drew Brees. Um... He, I feel like he's had a lot of problems these past couple of years. He had that those two years that he was awesome, and they made that um, Super Bowl run, and now he's here, and he hasn't changed for a while. Um, I mean, I don't know if it would, could be like an Andrew Luck situation where um, Newton knows he hasn't had success for a few years, and he's it's because he's been fighting off these injuries, and now something else is coming up. And – I've said this on our last podcast, rehabbing and injuries not only enable your physical health, but it also messes with your head. It messes with your mental health. And I don't know. I mean, I don't see him going anywhere else if he were to, like, get replaced. I I do think he's going to come back, though. Um, That would be another shocking moment if Adam Schefter was like, Cam Newton's retired. That would be like, it. this is the craziest year in football ever. I, <laughs> I think Cam Newton will come back. Um, if you ever played for another team, I think he'd be a backup. Mm, depending um, where. Unless he, would he go. came back and he got good for a little bit, but the Panthers weren't feeling it. Um, it could go either way. I think that he'll come back. Yeah, I, think I don't think fun. he'll give them the best run that he gave them previously. Mm-hmm. I think Kyle Allen's looking pretty good for them right now. You but think you that know, they'll whole, um, <laughs> replace him? Not, not replace him, but bench Newton and be like, take all of the time that you need to rehab this injury. I think once he claims he's fine, they're going to put him back they're in. They're going to put him back in. Interesting. Unless Kyle Allen's winning every single game for right. the next couple Unless weeks. Unless they're going undefeated, yeah, right? which they're not. So, um, These are also some minor ones, or maybe this one is. Um, of course, around our area, in the Philly area, the Cowboys game was not aired. Um, I watched it on a stream. No one saw it, but Alan Hearns, he's now a Miami Dolphin. He's a former Dallas Cowboy, the one who snapped his leg last year. Oh, my gosh, he, that broke my heart. So, Jeff Heath, his former teammate, oh, my gosh, he had just obliterated him. He hit him so hard, he fell to the ground and just was, done. like, passed out. And That's, it's, it's, Those are the scary. They are. The scariest hits because you see, I mean, in movies and documentaries that people that get hit like that, they become paralyzed. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, not that that's where my mind goes to right away, but you kind of take a step back and you're like, is he okay? Like, is he responsive? Is he going to be able to get up? Um, and that's when you realize, like, this is kind of more than just football. This is more than just getting a hit. It's now his livelihood. Like, will he ever be able to walk again? That's where my mind goes sometimes. And it's probably really bad, but it's – I mean, that's the game they play in. It's a dangerous game. So seeing those kind of hits, I never like to see anybody get Yeah, hurt. those hits are really scary. Um, 
just helmets and helmets are scary just all the things like that mm-hmm. any head thing scary like miles sanders scary i mean that was that wasn't a complete head injury but that's still scary he it's nerve almost snapped his neck yeah. and i think that it annoys me the most because there was no flag on that mm-hmm. and i don't know how much more obvious it could be I don't even I don't know if they got fined for it. I haven't seen anything, mm-hmm. but I also haven't looked into like the officiating Twitter or website. Um, but oh my gosh, I was so scared. I was like, "Is this guy?" Because you see his mm-hmm. helmet go all the way around. If his helmet did not come off, his head would his oh, yeah. neck would have snapped. I remember the he first, got lucky when I saw the video. I was like, "Is is his head going all the way around?" But it was his helmet coming <sighs> off, and I was like, "Oh, okay, that was Chills. a little um like that was." false advertisement right there at the beginning yeah, of it <laughs> seriously but um ronald darby another eagle hamstring nah. and then we have the falcon safety who tore his achilles unfortunately versus the colts that's such a rough injury that's always a sad one an and ACL, it's hard to achilles. come from it's really hard to come back from that yeah um acl mcl achilles um like major head injury that kind of stuff just stinks it's just really unfortunate i agree uh, um so, new in the trade area, there's not any noticeably important trades, but if we talk about Jalen Ramsey, he's not been traded. He requested a trade, supposedly, and then he said he didn't request it. So, he's another one who's kind of been all over the place. <laughs> he's turning into the other AB, I guess. But um, <laughs> Need it. Need somebody to pick up in his spot. Yeah, right? But Never be drama-free. He supposedly has a flu. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, maybe him and... Um, why did I just blank out? Um, Sam Darnold were hanging around <laughs> the same rumors. Oh, my gosh. The no. Because Sam Darnold has mono. Um, Jalen Ramsey's now really sick. We don't know if he'll get traded. I don't think the traded. I don't think the Jaguars are looking to trade him right now. I mean, why would you? He's one of the best players on your team. Mm-hmm. He's one of the best in that position in the league. So, yeah, he might be giving you a lot of attitude right now, but – Give him what he wants, and he's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, if he wants to get out of there, Howie Roseman needs to pick up the phone yeah, because our corners are struggling right now. Unfortunately, Ronald Darby is hurt, but he's a guy, whether hurt or not, who has really been struggling, um, just getting beat constantly. Yeah, um, Ronald Darby um, probably got ball. hurt after that Falcons game when he got beat three times. <laughs> <laughs> but I also know that, I think Howie's about a tight knit locker room as well, and I don't know how his personality would be around those guys. Not, I'm, we don't know them either. We hear that he's outspoken, mm-hmm. um, and then you're like, oh, automatically bad locker room guy. But we also don't know. So all I'm saying, Howie, if you're listening, probably pick not. But pick up the phone, make a call, get it done because we need help back there. Um, it's not a one man show. I mean, Malcolm's. Seems like he plays every single position. Razul Douglas, not sleeping on him, though. He's been pretty good. But um, The Phillies yeah. are leading the Nationals right now at oh, the end of the third. Great. No. Of course they decide to win now. <laughs> Let's just win every single game now because it matters so much, right? Maybe we can no. go back and say, please, please, MLB, let us in the playoffs. Yeah, and then they'll lose. We're sorry. They'll get swept <laughs> by the Marlins. <laughs> um, so some pre-week four questions and just a little introduction to week four. Um, the Saints versus the Cowboys. Do you think the Saints can win at home with their backup? Or do you think the Cowboys are pretty confident after their first three games? Like we said, they played some easy teams. Um, and this is this is this is in the Superdome. Mm-hmm. So this is going and that the Superdome's always hard to play in. Any dome's hard to play in. Um, but I think the Cowboys can handle that because they play in a dome. But the Saints have their backup, which is unfortunate for them and unfortunate for Drew Brees, but it's sadly lucky for us um, because we we don't have to face Breeze. He's one of the best in the league right now. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think? Do you think the Saints will handle that? Because um, the, Saints, the Saints won against the Seahawks right. in Seattle. The Saints With won against the Seahawks in Seattle. Um, Teddy up about 30 points. Teddy looks good. <laughs> he does look good. He's also not true Breeze. I'm not saying that was like a freak win because it wasn't at all, but – I don't know if they can pull that off back-to-back weeks. Um, Dak's been putting up a lot of points with Amari and Zeke, so I don't necessarily think they're going to win this game. Um, I think if it was Drew Brees, it would be a completely different conversation. We oh, know I, that. I would say the Saints um, are winning if it was Drew Brees. No I would too. It. But 
I don't. I think the Cowboys have this one. I hope the Cowboys have this one. I really, I do have been happy the past three weeks, and I'm not looking to be sad anymore. I was. <laughs> I mean, you'll still be leading the division, so yeah. Right. <laughs> Either way, no matter what, <laughs> we can lose this week. Yeah, there you go. Because you guys are probably going to lose this week too. Not yeah. to put a damper on it, but why are we agreeing on this? I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, right. Like we're finally. Why am I like? Oh yeah, the Cowboys are going to win. The Eagles are going to lose. Um. Alshon's, they're saying he's going to be back, mm -hmm. but I don't know how much he's going to play. You don't want to force him in there. Um, I don't want him to be hurt for the rest of the season. I want him to be healthy. So if you need to keep him out longer, then do that. We're playing the Packers, which is a very high-powered offense. Um, Rodgers is the quarterback. And our corners, like I said, are not looking good at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't know how they're going to do on the deep ball. Um and our front four has honestly been struggling. We Malik Jackson got hurt. Mm -hmm. um, Timmy Jernigan got hurt. Fletcher Cox does not have a lot of help up there. Yeah. So with that being said, he's probably getting double teams on every play, and they're still able to stop them from getting to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. I don't think they had one sack in the Lions game. I'm pretty sure I can look it up, but I'm almost positive they did not mm -hmm. have one sack in that Lions game. Pretty pathetic. Um Derek Barnett needs to step up in that defensive end position. Um, I, I don't know. I just – I don't feel good about it. I want to feel good about it. Yeah, right. But I think our offense could pull it off if we ha do have Alshon, at least one of the guys back. But we also don't know how much he's going to play. And I'm worried about this defense holding up with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers offense. Yeah, right. Um – I think the Eagles will lose only because it's in the Packers country too. And yeah, I yeah, think they would lose either way. I feel I feel like they would lose either way too. If, if they unless they have Deshaun and Alshon and Goddard yeah. and everybody's healthy and we're going to happy go lucky, let's go. I'm only saying they're going to lose because of their injuries. If you okay. had every guy 100% right now, it would be a different game. I think it would be a totally mm -hmm. different game. They're playing they're not playing a preseason game, but they're playing a week three preseason game and also week four because a lot of times people don't care week four <laughs> not don't care but you know what i mean it's a week three preseason game with your starting drive so you're playing a couple of your starting players and you're not playing your starting quarterback so it's it's a week three preseason game on their team because mm -hmm. some of their starters are playing some of their backups are playing and it's then you throw so in the mix right um i think they'll lose i think Again, they're going to put up a good fight. They put up a good fight against the Packers. The, um, not the Packers, the Falcons. They definitely always put up a good fight. And it's just, like, I just want to text, just too text late. Carson Wentz. Hey, one more touchdown in the first half and you're going to win. Yeah. Because it, the past two weeks, one more touchdown in that first half and you guys would have won. It's just little things like that, which you don't, yeah, it's hard. I sound like, I sound stupid because I don't, I'm not on the field. But play like you do in the second half and the first half. And that's going to do so much. And it's going to go such a long way. I think it's going to be a close score. Um, just mm -hmm. because the Eagles always fight well. I don't think it's going to be like – it's not going to be a 31-14. to 14. No, it's I gonna don't be think like it's going to be a blowout. But I do think they need something. to come out strong, like you said, in the first half. Especially in that first quarter. Do what they did last week, but also um, score in the second quarter. Like, keep that – um, drive going, get the running backs involved. You're not going to be able to put Alshon out there for every play. He's getting off an injury. If he does play, we don't even know if he's playing yet. But get Jordan Howard involved, please. Miles Sanders, you can get him involved too. Darren Sproles, use the running game while you don't have your number one and two wide receivers in there because Zach Ertz is getting double teamed down the field. There was a lot of coverage last week where he was getting double teamed because he's the best – well, he's a tight end, but best receiver on that in that core right now. So I think they need to utilize the running game. They need to come out strong. Um, I would be so happy if they won. I do think the Packers are going to lose at some point. I just don't think that this week. I think the Packers are going to lose it. at some point too, and I don't. Yeah, I don't think this week is it. But I think this week is not a rebuilding week for the Eagles. But hopefully, it's where they use their running game. Hopefully, they realize the past two weeks that Zach Ertz. If you keep playing Zach Ertz that much and trying to give the ball to Zach Ertz that much, Zach Ertz is going to get hurt. 
Mm-hmm. Let's look at what happened in the last play of the Falcons game when <laughs> Zach Ertz walked out the field because oh he gosh. he got hit hard and then came back in. I can't find my because words. They today. needed him. Yeah, and he he walked right back in because he knew that he was their best quote unquote ride receiver that was out there at the time. And yeah, Carson likes to throw to Zach a little too much at sometimes i mean they have though, a good bond deshaun i mean he was hitting deshaun mm-hmm. in that um redskins game and deshaun's a deep threat mm-hmm. he's a he's 30 31 years old but he's still so fast he's gonna beat those corners and those safeties but you don't have that right now nelson aguilar is fast he's also a better slot receiver than he is on the outside and he's also not catching the ball <laughs> Yeah. Um, although I have to give him his props. He had two touchdowns last game. Um, I don't know if you saw that thing on Twitter, but <laughs> there was a guy talking about how they were throwing out babies oh of gosh. a burning building. And the guy on the camera was like, well, at least they can catch, unlike Nelson Aguilar. Nelson- Aguilar replied mm-hmm. and was like, "Let hey, you're right, or whatever, and let me give you two tickets to the game. He's a class act, let me tell you. So I just hope that gives him motivation on the field. But he's also not used to being the number one receiver. And that's what he is when Deshaun and Alshon are not there. So he's trying to get into that while also being like, I got to catch this ball. I got to make this play. It's a mental game. Mm -hmm. It's a physical game. And I just, I really, really hope that they have at least Alshon or Deshaun back healthy. (laughs) (laughs) Healthy. Let's let's pray. (laughs) That Twitter video was, that was so (laughs) funny. I think the guy who said it, he... Probably, you know, just got done watching his football game and he was like, Pissed. can't get it off his head. <laughs> I'd spit it out. Like, you know, I don't think he meant it to hurt Nelson Aguilar. No, I, I think don't he think was so just, either. He I, didn't. I think he was just being a little bit honest in that sense, which is honestly sometimes isn't mean. It's just, you know, it's the best policy. Um, I thought that really quick we can run through, before we do our picks, we can run through some power rankings. This is something that I kind of find interesting because the power rankings have been changing. Um... So, for example, I'm just going to read a couple. Patriots are number one, pr- like, predicted. Kansas City Chiefs are number two. And the Rams are number three. The Cowboys are number four. Which I feel like the Packers up there? The, the Packers are number five. So, I think the... I would have the Packers above the Cowboys. Yes, yeah, I would just too. Just because of Aaron Rodgers. Um, and you look at who they played, and you also look at who Dallas played. You have to put that into factor. Um, not saying they're both free and no, that's great, but... Green Bay wasn't supposed to come out for you know. No, I totally agree. I would keep, I would put the Packers above them because, um, yeah, because of the Cowboys who pl- the who the Cowboys have played. I cannot get my <laughs> words together because if the Cowboys have played, it's not the teams that I mean, the Packers play the uh, the Bears. Like mm-hmm. they played harder teams, but not taking that into account, the Ravens are six. Ravens are higher than the Saints. The Saints are seven. Well, yeah, I could see that just because of Breeze not being in. So the Baltimore Ravens went down. They were actually number five, and the Packers went up, but they were actually number six. Hmm. So they switched spots. The Saints came up from number nine. Oh, wow. Oh, so they're at number win. seven now. Yeah. The Vikings were 11. They came up to eight. They're another team they're to two look and out one. for. They are, which is... I feel like they're always like that, though. I feel like they're, they're always, always so inconsistent. The Vikings have never won a Super Bowl, and every time I think about that, I'm like... Vikings have never won a Super Bowl. Vikings had Randy Moss on their team. Like, what do you mean? I, um, (laughs) I can't even talk now. Stefan Diggs, if you're listening to this, please step up the game for the love of my fantasy team. (laughs) One point just isn't enough. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Uh, the Seahawks, they went down. They're number nine now. Or yes, they were seven originally, which is the Saints are higher than the Seahawks too, and. They have Russell Wilson. I mean, I would only put them above just for what happened last week because I agree. they won with a backup quarterback in Seattle land, if that's what we'll call it. Seattle land. <laughs> or Seahawk land, whatever. I don't know what they call it, but the Tex- that's the new name. <laughs> the Texans went up from number 12. They're not number 10. That um, That's predictable. They, yeah. I mean, they have Deshaun Watson. I predictable. like him a lot, too. 49ers number 11, like I said. The forty, <laughs> the 49ers are 11, and the Bills are 12, and the Lions are 13. The Lions are higher than the Bears and the Eagles and the Chargers. Honestly, though, they deserve it. I mean, 
look at the records yeah i think yeah that's just and the steelers mm. losing three games they're number 25 <laughs> <laughs> the giants are number 26 <laughs> and they have one more win than them <laughs> oh wow hmm. who do you, who do you think's last like dead last like dead dead last redskins maybe no no the dolphins <laughs> oh and they were always 32 wow that what was do, dumb i definitely what do you think all right give me your bottom five who do you think redskins dolphins raiders uh-uh. but really keep, but keep going the raiders are number 24 oh do you want to know Hold on, let me think. <laughs> yeah, that's on me. All right. 28, Cardinals. 29, Redskins. 30 of the Bengals. The Bengals, yeah. 31 is the Jets. 32 oh my is the God. Dolphins. Jets. The poor, the poor Jets. Uh, the poor Jets. Poor Le'Veon Bell, honestly. I feel bad for the guy. I think he has a good mindset still. Yeah. He's telling everyone, keep your head up. Like, say, oh, keep on your his head up. On Twitter, yeah, oh, I feel like he's always posting, like, we'll be back. Um it's just the third game of the season so it's good to see that he's enjoying his time there and like getting what he deserves <laughs> i actually wanted to touch on miami really quick and the amount of picks that they have in the next couple drafts um sorry they have i think three first rounders in the upcoming draft and then i think they have two first rounders in the next draft they have a couple second rounders. I, I could be wrong, but um, they have a ton of picks. So in the next five years, see them being good. They're going to rebuild their whole team like the Cowboys did when they traded Herschel Walker. <laughs> um, and I mean, then they yeah. won some <laughs> Um Unless they – I mean, the only way they would give them up is if they needed them for trades, but I don't think the Dolphins are going to be anywhere near the playoffs this year, so why trade a top pick for – something you don't need because they're not going to get there. All right, ready? Sorry, Miami. The 2020 draft. Their first pick, the Texans and the Steelers. Three first rounds. Texans? Yes. Really? The sec the second round they have their own pick and a Saints pick. Third, they have their own then a uh, possibly a another pick possibly. So they've been building for the future this whole time. Yes. They're just Oh, and then joking all of us. They possibly have two in the fifth. They possibly, and then they have two in the sixth and seventh. That's 2020. 2021, they have their own in the Texans. So two picks in the first, two picks in the second. Yeah. That's, um, they're going to be, they're going to be a rebuilding team. I mean, they they're not good now, but in 2023, about be ready. We'll be 23. We'll be out of college. Well, you'll yeah, be out of college before me, yeah. but we will be out of college Holy when the crap, Dolphins win the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's insane. It is. Wow. Let's do some pregame predictions. You want to? You want to <laughs> lead? Thursday at eight twenty, Eagles at Packers. We kind of touched on this already. I'm going to take the Packers. Unfortunately, go Pack. Go. I hope the Eagles <laughs> completely prove me wrong. I would be such a happy fan, but from a football standpoint, I'm taking the Packers. I'm taking the Packers, but only by like, uh, like a small margin, like 27-24, yeah. something like that. I think it's gonna be a close scoring game. I hope it's not a last second game because they, it's gonna be. It's just gonna. It's be. a nail biter every single week. Like I have, I feel like my heart's gonna jump out of my chest. I'm like pacing around my house. My parents are like, sit down. I'm like, you don't <laughs> understand. Like I can't. Um. So, hopefully they win. Hopefully it ends up in their favor this week. <laughs> um, Sunday at 1, we have the Redskins at Giants. Some in-division game. I'm going to take the Giants. I think Daniel Jones at home. He's going to get a warm welcome. I'm going to take the Giants. I, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see Daniel Jones, but don't get too comfortable, Daniel Jones, because you're not winning the division. <laughs> We're still ahead of you, and the Eagles are probably going to be too. Uh, <laughs> hopefully. Um, Chiefs at Lions. That's going to be an interesting game. I do think the Chiefs are a better team, though. I still take the Chiefs, no, even though they're both No matter undefeated. if the Lions are undefeated or not, I still take the Chiefs. Titans at Falcons. But that game is going to break someone's undefeated streak. Yeah. So that'll be, that'll be a good one. That'll be interesting mm -hmm. if, the, if it's the Chiefs. Uh, one more the streak Chiefs broken. Um, Titans. Why am I saying it like that? Titans. <laughs> Titans. <laughs> okay, all right. Titans at Falcons. Um, I'm going to take the Falcons. I'm going to take the Falcons. But – 
It could really go either way. Yeah. I mean, the Titans beat the Browns by a ton. That's true. But Falcons. Um, Browns at Ravens. This is going to be a good game. I wanted to go to this game, and I was going to go to this game, but I don't think I'm going now. No. But I want to make the drive, and I want to go. <laughs> I don't know. I took the Browns last week, and they did disappoint. Um, see, both teams lost, so they both want to win. This is a divisional game, too. So this is going to be um, oh, this is gonna be a heated game. I don't know. Part of me wants to take the Browns again because I think that – Do it. Baker is going to have, like, a comeback game. But I also think Lamar Jackson is going to be the same way because they just lost a game against the Chiefs. Oh, my gosh. All right. Odell's having a big game. They're going to make that connection this week. Do you want to bet, like, a Starbucks on it? <laughs> How about, like, a 25 cent? Oh, my gosh. You know those things at the mall where you put the quarter in and, like, You'll bet me one of those? Yeah, yeah All I, right. I got you one of them. <laughs> so 25 um, cents. There I, we go. Yeah, I'll take the Ravens. Um. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> I feel like the games we always disagree on, like, I look out extra to see. Uh, am I really? Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, the Browns. I was like, all right, let's go. Like, I can <laughs> you. You and Vince were both like, you're taking the Browns? And I was like, yeah. I was very surprised. Right. No. It wasn't but right. they were close. They were yeah. really like, They put up a fight. Surprisingly close. I thought at the end they were. I was like, oh, my gosh. I the thought they were going to pull win. it off. But, um. Raiders at Colts. I'm going to take the Colts. Colts. Patriots at Bills. This is going to also kill someone's undefeated streak. Patriots. Hmm. I'm going to take the Pats as well. The Patriots I think have the their Bills whole team out. are a good one. team, but you're going against Tom Brady, so. <laughs> Why am I laughing? But that's so the, it's the so Patriots true. Like, could have their whole start. I mean, their whole starting lineup out, except for Tom Brady, yeah. and win. Mm-hmm. That's he can let her. He can do. <laughs> I mean, we make excuses for the Eagles, like not having Deshaun and Alshon. I mean, Carson's not Brady, but he's he's just insane to me. Like, you're. We think he's at the end of his career, and every season he's like, "Nope, I'm gonna win another Super Bowl. I'm coming back." It's just crazy to me how good he is. Still. He is not retiring until he has a major injury i think i hope he, he doesn't have is a major in injury his, he's in his prime i mean he ran um faster than he did in the combine i, I mean he's eating better now i mean he dates, he's aging backwards he physically and, dates, and mentally in football and he dates an insane model so maybe yeah. that's why he eats all these <laughs> stuff but whatever um, panthers at texans i'm gonna take the texans texans you know kyle allen's mm, it for nah. the panthers right now texans chargers at dolphins chargers chargers sorry <laughs> dolphins i i don't Get him, Philip Rivers. Get him. <laughs> Sunday at 4.05. Bucks at Rams. Mm, I'm going to take the Rams. Rams. Seahawks at Cardinals. I'm going to take the Seahawks. Hawks. <laughs> because, just because of the Our Seahawks and Russell Wilson. We're getting some good games now. Sunday at 4.25. Is Vikings at Bears. So this is going to be a rematch. What do you think? Mm. I mean, the Bears had a good game, but they also played the Redskins. So we do have to keep that in mind. This is a tough pick for me. But it's I at Chicago. I want you to pick who I don't pick because I want. I do think the Vikings are going to take this just for the pure facts. What happened last season? The Bears created their own destiny first they did. of all. <laughs> but um, I'm going to go with the Vikings. I I don't know. I'm so iffy about this one. I feel like it could go either way. It depends how Trubisky plays. But they also have that dominant defense. I'm also going to take the Vikings. Dang. Um. <laughs> Even though it's at Bears country, we're calling every team. <laughs> um, the Bears defense is insane. the Bears defense is definitely going to stop the Vikings. The Bears defense is going to get an interception at some point off Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. um, but Kirk Cousins knows that he cannot be comfortable right now. Kirk Cousins knows that he actually came forward and said, "If I don't play as good, if I don't start to play really good, I don't know what's going to happen." Which is kind of like wow. It, um, yeah, it's something. A lot of people think he probably shouldn't say, but for him to say that, that's gutsy. And he knows he needs to play good right now. And I think that the Vikings are going to have this one. I think that the Vikings, I really want it to be the Vikings year one year. I want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl. Mm. I really do. I feel I bad. I really feel bad. So I'm going to take mean, the Vikings. Do you feel bad when the Eagles never won a Super Bowl? Absolutely not. <laughs> I hope that of I will say not. we never won one. <laughs> Best year of my Made life. Made my life miserable. <laughs> I was the happiest person I ever. was the only kid in school on that day, everyone. <laughs> only kid in school. My school but, didn't get canceled. <laughs> the Vikings, 
our school didn't cl- get canceled at all. No. I had one class that was our senior year, and I saw my teacher that I had that class for at the parade <laughs> and getting off the train. He was like, Kayla. And I was like, wait, what? So no Eagles fan was showing up to school that day. It was Cow- wonderful. Cowboys fans were. Yeah. Won't you were sure. all sad and <laughs> weeping in your sorrows. And I do not feel bad. Um, yeah. I mean, he's playing with a chip on his shoulder and yeah. that gives him that extra aggression. But I do think for Trubisky, it's a game where he can prove that he's starting to be more consistent for the Bears. I would like to see them put up a lot of points. I don't know if it's going to happen I think it's going to be more of the Bears defense um calling the shots but I would like to see Trubisky kind of break through and have another breakout game he can definitely prove a lot in this game to his um mm-hmm. to the fans and everyone if he can beat the Bears. um Sunday at 425 Jags at Broncos Jags let's go Gardner let's really go. I'm gonna take I was gonna take the Broncos do it <laughs> Joe Flacco <laughs> I I was watching him. I don't know. When did they play last week? Sunday? Mm-hmm. Yes. He – poor guy, man. I Sun- mean, they played the Packers. I know, but still, like, I feel like he was great on the Ravens when they had that Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And the Broncos, I just I feel like it's not doing it for him. But I'm going to take the Broncos. All right. Whoever has Joe Flacco on fantasy, this is going to be his game calling. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I'm I, not getting that hype about it. I don't think it, a lot of people have Joe Flacco on yeah, fantasy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, Sunday at 820, Cowboys at Saints. This would be an awesome game if Drew Brees was playing. I don't want to pick this game. Really? I'm not picking. I'm, no, I'm going to take the Cowboys because the Saints I'm not have picking. their backup. I, Why? I'm too stressed to pick. Are I you really? I can't pick because I feel like... I can't. I just can't pick. I physically can't pick. Sorry, everyone. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not picking. Your I'm bias very, is getting in there. It, no, it's not my bias. It's just I'm very superstitious about certain um, things. Like, so I don't want to say one thing because then I'm just gonna think that the one way I went is gonna determine <laughs> the fate for forever. They heard this podcast and they're gonna do exactly the opposite of what you said. I really don't know. It could so go either way. I don't know. I mean, I, every game can go either way, but like. I think if this it would be the Saints if especially because it's in New Orleans, um, if Drew Brees is playing, but they do have the backup. They did come off a big win, so they have momentum. Yeah. But the Cowboys also have momentum as well. This is what I have to say to my Cowboys first and then I'll talk to the Saints. Cowboys. Don't be too confident because yes, you've been winning three games, but it's only three games. You're only in the week four now. If you were in the week eight I say be confident and go crazy, but you haven't. This is your hardest team this season, like your first hard game this season. Be cautious. Don't be <laughs> too excited. Yes, you're great. Yes, hot boys, go get them. But be careful. Um, the Saints. Um, I think Cowboys. You need to be confident, be cocky, and lose <laughs> for this Birds fan over here because I'm tired of seeing. Cowboys win, Cowboys win, Cowboys win. All right, talk to me when you play a real team. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. I've been saying that all week. (laughs) I think for the Saints, like you said, they have so much momentum right now because they just beat the Seahawks with a backup. Um, (laughs) Hopefully they are not – hopefully they are not – I don't think they're going to be comfortable. Like, hopefully they're not comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, like, all right, we're going to win. Hopefully they're – going to be loud. They know that it's going to be a competition. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, more than it has been in the yes. previous weeks. Yes. Um, but, but but the thing is, you wouldn't think that the Seahawks would have been a competition no. with them. Like, I mean, you uh, – sorry. You would think that the Seahawks would have won. Right. Like, I thought it was going to be a close game. Their first week with a But not having, right, Drew Brees in there, I definitely had the Seahawks winning that game. Um, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good Sunday night game. Um, I do miss Drew Brees, though. We miss you. Drew Brees fan club. Jaden, yeah. where you at? <laughs> Kayla and I, with our friend Jaden, have a Drew Brees fan club. Yeah. Fun we times. love him. <laughs> because last year, he, he was just amazing. Amazing. But um, last game, these Monday night games, like, I don't know how much worse they can get. Kayla and I have a theory that they are just, the Thursday night and the Monday night games are always bad. This Thursday night's fine, but Monday nights definitely are this always Thursday bad. This Thursday night, it's actually a good game. Like, not saying that just because I'm an Eagles fan, but having a team that's 
gone through adversity, has these injuries, needs to make a statement against a team that has been rolling and wasn't supposed to be, and they've been the underdog. So Thursday night's good, and I have off of work. Um, you know, I kind of, like, took off because it's the Eagles game. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> good thing I work Monday. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, I, um, I don't work. I don't, I don't know work what I'm going to take. I'm going to take the Steelers. With I'm Mason take the Rudolph, just for the fun right. of it, just for the fun of it, because you know what? Why not? Bengals. Who who did I pick? Um, the Browns and the Bengals. BB. Let's go Steelers. I'm, gonna, right. I'm a diehard <laughs> Browns and Bengals fan. No, I'm actually hey, not. Hey, I'm, I'm a big Browns girl. Right now. I like Browns, but you did pick just Ravens, because so. I love just because I love OBJ <laughs> forever and always <laughs> in my course. heart, even though that. The best catch of all time was against the Cowboys. <laughs> I still love OBJ. Wow. I, I forgive him for that. When he was a giant. Yeah, when he was a giant, he owns MetLife. <laughs> so that was that was it, guys. Um, wrapping up um, the, the end of the Phillies, I guess. And Sixers soon, only yeah. less than a month. Matisse Thibel did roll his ankle, though. Um, I just thought about that. <laughs> It's like the rookie's coming in. Oh, he got hurt. That's supposed to happen. And I saw all these jokes. Oh, out for the 2019-2020 mm-hmm. season. I'm like, don't make that joke because we probably like it's not need to use him this year. Um, so hopefully he's okay. But once the Sixers basketball comes back, we'll talk about that too. But for right now, it's going to be NFL. And, I mean, we can talk about some Free playoff football. baseball. Um, see, like, what teams we think are going to be – in for the World Series, wild card games, but just being a local in the local area, Philly team's not doing it this year. I got to take my Phillies flag off at some point now. <laughs> six years and Eagles on. Back up. Oh. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we hope to see you back next time. Um, go ahead, say your little thing. I am Kayla Santiago, and I would like to say, go Birds, beat the Packers. Now I'm a diehard Eagles fan, not from a football <laughs> standpoint. We got this. <laughs> That's all. Go. <laughs> Boys, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> they, don't, they don't play the PlayStation like us. They don't play it like us. That's what I said. They don't play the PlayStation like us. I know y'all interpret the hit. They don't play it like us.